Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this, how to overcome any sin. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through because I believe that it's going to be a great blessing to your life. So let's jump right into it. How to overcome any sin. There's so many Christians that are fighting a certain sin. And for many different Christians is many different sins. Some people's sins that some people struggle with are not the sins that other people struggle with. And sometimes people are left feeling like they're hypocrites, they're fake, they're phony. Man, what happened? I thought the Holy Spirit was supposed to give me deliverance. I thought when I accept Jesus, I wasn't going to struggle with these things anymore. Well, it's because a lot of Christians don't know about something called the sinful nature. The sinful nature. What is the sinful nature? The sinful nature is this, our flesh, this body that we're living in has a sinful nature. It's born bound to sin. The Bible says that to live in the flesh is to be against God because the flesh wants to be against God. Let me just give you an example. Before you were saved, in your mind, were you trying to serve the Lord before you were saved, before you had a knowledge of Jesus? Were you just naturally trying to honor God? No, you were naturally trying to honor yourself, your desires, your sensuality, your ambitions. Why? Because we were born with the sinful nature. How did the sinful nature come into the world? When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, sin entered this world. They were at once perfect and flawless, having fellowship with God. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they brought sin into the world and after adam every person ever born has adam's trait what is adam's trait the sinful nature but there's good news there's amazing news now through jesus christ that sinful nature can be broken in other words we no longer have to live slaves to the sinful nature now we are born again you've heard that the Bible says that we must be born again. That's what Jesus told a Pharisee at night in the book of John chapter 3. You must be born again to be saved. So now through Jesus Christ, we are born again. Now, why do you think that we are born again? So that we can be set free from the bondage of the sinful nature. But will the sinful nature still try to battle? Will the sinful nature still try to grab and grasp? And will the sinful nature still take his last swings at us? Oh, yes, it will. And that's why a lot of Christians battle certain sins and they feel that they can never overcome them. But I want to let you know that you can overcome them through Jesus Christ. So let's learn how to overcome any sin. Look what the Bible says here. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. Now that you know about the sinful nature, that was very important for us to know. Now let's read. Look what the Bible says here. Besides this, Paul is speaking to a group of Christians that are in Rome. It's like Las Vegas. It's like the most wild place to live at that time. He tells them this. Besides this, you know that the time, the hour has come for you to wake up from sleep. What does he mean to wake up from sleep? He's talking about from spiritual sleep. See, when people are living in sin, they're spiritually asleep. But when we come to Jesus Christ, we wake up. And Jesus is called the light of the world. He's represented in the Bible as the morning time, okay? So we're waking up from living a life of sin. We were asleep in the life of sin, but now we're awake in Jesus Christ. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. What does that mean? means every single day we're getting closer to seeing Jesus. Every single day we're getting closer to seeing Jesus, whether it be in the rapture or whether it be in our time of death. But every day we're getting closer to see Jesus. And he's saying, hey, you don't got no time to play. Every single day you're getting closer to meet the Lord. Wake up spiritually. That's what he's telling these believers. He says, the night is far gone, meaning we've been set free from living in the night. We've been set free from that bondage of sin, that life of sin. We've been born again. That's what he means by the night is far gone. The day is at hand, talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So then let us cast off the works of darkness. What are the works of darkness? The works of the flesh, the works of sin, the desires of the flesh, being bound to sin, listening to sin, like if that's our master. He says, so let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Here it is. He's getting closer. He says, throw off the desires, your old carnal mentality that you were living for your own ambitions. Throw away that mindset and put on the armor of light. Put on the different mindset. Now I'm living for Christ. That's what he means by put on the armor of light. He says, let us walk properly as in the daytime, 
Let us walk understanding that we're not just living in our old life. Let us walk properly understanding that we're living through Jesus Christ now. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness. Orgies can be used to represent wild parties also. He says, and in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Man, verse 14 is very, very important. Look what he says. He says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, by this time, we've already put off the works of darkness. By this time, we're no longer bound to that mentality of living for ourselves. Now we understand that we're not living for ourselves. Now we understand that we're living for Jesus. We're living for the Lord. We've been born again. He says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, his mindset, his words. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it is. This is very important. This is the key. This is the answer to overcome any sin. And make no provisions for the flesh. What is the flesh? The sinful nature that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. That's the flesh. He says, make no provisions. You see, back in the day and even today, nowadays, one of the strategies of war is that the person that they're coming against, they'll surround them, they'll surround the city, and they'll cut off the resources. And what do you think is going to happen when the city that's being attacked, what do you think is going to happen when all its resources are cut off? going to become weaker it's going to become fragile it's going to become debilitated and eventually what's going to happen it's going to surrender it's going to lose do you know what the, the apostle paul is telling us by make no provisions for the flesh he's given us a simple example stop supplying your sinful nature with what it needs to continue to control you he says to gratify its desires let me give you an example anytime you listen to a artists speaking about any type of worldly passion glorifying any type of worldly passion you're supplying the flesh with what it needs you're supplying the flesh you're making provisions for the flesh and do you think your flesh is debilitating i'm talking about the sinful nature do you think the sinful nature is growing weaker or stronger it's growing stronger you're giving it what it needs every time you look at things that you're not supposed to be looking at right here he calls it sensuality right now he calls it sexual immorality Anytime you look at something like that, what do you think you're doing? You're making provisions for the flesh. See, I made a conscious choice in my life that if I watch a rated R movie, it's going to be only for action. It's only going to be a, a rated R movie for action. But if it's rated R for anything else, even if it's just a one second scene, a two second scene of anything else, you know what I'm talking about, any type of immorality, I'm not going to watch that movie. If it's for action and it's a true story and it's like a war movie or something like that, and you know it's rated R for action, maybe, maybe. But even at that, I, I'll make a conscious decision. Will it be good for my mind? Will it be good for my spirit? But any other movie, any other movie, even if it's PG-13, any other movie, if it has any type of immorality or sensuality in it, I, I'm not going to watch it because I don't want to give provisions to my flesh. I don't want to make provisions to the flesh. No, 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 no. Don't make provisions to the flesh. The Bible is saying, cast off the works of darkness and put on Jesus Christ. What happens when you cast off the works of darkness? And what happens when you put on Jesus Christ and you stop making provisions for the flesh? Your spirit is growing, but the flesh is decreasing. I want to read you this also. Look what the Bible says, Galatians 5, 16 through 25. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. He's saying, walk in the spirit and you won't walk in the flesh. The apostle Paul is saying, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Do you know what the Apostle Paul is saying? If you want to walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit. But if you walk in the flesh, you're not going to walk in the spirit. And if you walk in the spirit, you're not going to live in the flesh. He's saying because these two things are going away from each other. But what do you think happens when a Christian's walking in the flesh? Are they getting closer to God or further from God? They're getting further from the things of God. Are they getting closer to deliverance or further from deliverance? They're getting further from deliverance. Are they getting closer to freedom or further from freedom? They're getting further from freedom. He says these two things are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. If you walk in the Spirit, if you're walking in the direction of the Word of the Lord, if you're walking in the direction of the Spirit, it's going to keep you from living a life 
in the flesh. How to overcome any sin? Stop giving the flesh what it wants. Stop giving the flesh what it desires. Sensuality. Immorality. And you might say, man, but that's very difficult. How am I going to do that? This is a small example. If there's movies that you used to watch with those things, don't watch those things anymore. If there's music that you used to entertain yourself with that had those things, you know, maybe don't listen to that music anymore. And I'm being, I'm being very, very polite about it. It's your choice. Maybe don't listen to that music anymore. When you stop making these provisions for the flesh in those type of ways, you're going to have victory in your life. That's what it means. Stop giving the flesh what it wants. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Do you know what the Spirit wants? The Spirit wants to go to church. Do you know what the Spirit wants? The Spirit wants Christian fellowship. The Bible says if you hang around wise people, you will become wise. But if you hang around fools, you will become fools. The Bible says bad company ruins good morals. The Spirit wants Christian fellowship. The Spirit wants to go to church. The Spirit wants to hear the Word of God. The Spirit wants to be around the things of the Lord. The Spirit wants to pray. The Spirit wants to read the Bible. Make no provisions for the flesh. In other words, it's very simple. The Apostle Paul is saying, stop supplying the flesh with what it wants. And when you stop supplying the flesh with what it wants, you will grow stronger spiritually. Plain and simple. And that's how you can overcome any sin. And at first it might be a battle. Oh, it might be a battle. Believe me, it might be a battle. But as you walk, not in the works of darkness, but walk with the armor of light, with Jesus Christ, you're going to begin to see that the things you used to struggle with before, you no longer struggle with them. And why? Because you're getting closer to the things of God and you're no longer supplying the flesh with what it wants, with the passions of the sinful nature. I hope this video was a big blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.